we are going to turn this into a stout, a white stout. But if that wasn't weird enough, we are also going to make that white stout a hot cross bun Easter white stout. Welcome to our Easter special. We're back. Let's get into it. Welcome back, brewers and beer lovers of Flying Wombat TV, the channel all about beer, banter, and bloody good times. Today, we are making a stout, but it's a white stout, and it's not just a white stout, it's gonna have a ton of hot cross buns in it. So, I'm not sure how common these are in America, but uh, in Australia, hot cross buns are massive. I know they are in the UK, so I think it must be all like the British based colonies, but they're like a real super Eastery thing. It's kind of like a little sugar coated bun with raisins and cinnamon and vanilla and all kinds of sugary goodness in there. But we're gonna throw a bunch of these into our white stout today to try and make it taste like a white hot cross bun stout Easter thing. You get the general idea. So these are gonna go in with our grains as well as rice hulls. I know, I'm sorry for all the people that have already been following our uh, videos for quite a while. I keep going on about this every time. But when you're working with a lot of oats and a lot of wheat, which we will be today, you want rice hulls to make sparging a little easier. No flavor, no sugar, no color comes from this. It just makes sparging better. As far as the actual makeup of this grain bill goes today, we're gonna to be using a decent amount of oats. We're gonna be using a fair bit of wheat to help with that body and creamy mouthfeel. The vast majority of this grain bill is just gonna be pale ale malt, but then we also are using gladiator malt, which is a dextrin malt to really increase foam retention, head, and just body in general. So let's get this stuff crushed and we can get into mashing. Important to point out, by the way, don't put the rice hulls or the oats in the mill. Uh, they don't go through mills. Just add them to the rest of your grains when you finish crushing. Also the hot cross buns. Also the hot cross buns. <laughs> hot cross buns probably won't go through a mill. <laughs> Unless you really want to. <laughs> That right down in there is a one millimeter gap between the rollers if you are new to using a grain crusher. So start with that. It's about the width of a credit card and it'll generally kind of do the job. You can always adjust it as you need from there. The salt profile for our Easter hot cross bun white stout is gonna be relatively simple, but we're running with 62 parts per million calcium, nine parts magnesium, 15 parts sodium, 98 chloride, 49 sulfate, and 57 uh, carbonate. Now. I'm kind of doing a bit of a, um, a two to one ratio again with the chloride to the sulfate because I just want to accentuate the creamier body and mouthfeel in this one, which I think is going to lend a little more nicely to a white stout. Onto the brewing. Alrighty, let's get into it. Once again, I have failed to buy a smaller mash paddle. One of these days I will, because this little baby Bruzilla is just not big enough for that giant, giant paddle. Um, I guess as good a time as any to talk about the strike water here. We're running with 20 liters. Do not know, that's a lot of grain dust. I should be wearing a mask. 20 liters of, uh, of strike water. We are gonna be mashing in for one hour at 69 degrees Celsius, which yes, I know is quite warm, but the whole idea behind this is we want this beer to retain quite a decent amount of head and body and mouthfeel because the idea is it's not actually a blonde that we're making, we're making a white stout. So we don't want it to be really light on the body, we want it to be relatively thick on the finish, hence the gladiator mold and stuff. So amongst that, we need to start throwing in these hot cross buns. I don't really know the best way to gr brew with like bread <laughs> in brewing. So our best bet, well our best guess anyway, is to kind of just grab these kind of a bunch at a time, rip them apart, have a little bit for me. <laughs> rip them apart and just kind of throw them in in like little clumps, kind of like you're going to a pond and feeding the ducks. We're feeding the boiler. Because I do have a suspicion that these things are actually gonna make my sparging quite difficult. Because I reckon this bread is gonna swell up and it's gonna cause me problems later. But <coughs> I just tried to breathe hot cross bun. <laughs> oh man. <coughs> now, we do have rice hulls in here, which might help a bit. I have a slight suspicion I probably should have used more rice hulls than I did based on 
the actual buns going in, but oh, that's a problem for future McKelty. We'll see how this thing turns out. Well, so far, so good. The one advantage we do have going for us is that this grain bill is not super heavy. It's, what was the total weight of all this? I can't remember, it'll show up on screen. I think it was like four kilos or something, four and a half kilos. It, it wasn't a super heavy grain bill, so we've got plenty of mash space, mash ton space. I hope that means that um, this all goes smoothly. A hot cross bun with sugar on top. That's how the old nursery rhyme goes. Though, if you've never seen one of these, it's literally just kind of like a, uh, almost like a scone crossed with a bread roll. That's kind of what it is, just with more sugar. So you kind of got like an icing cross on top. You got a bunch of sultanas if you're from, you know, down under, or raisins if you're from up north. And um, what else? Cinnamon, some vanilla, brown sugar. I think, oh, and allspice, I think is also used in this thing. Uh, it's just kind of like a sweet, sweet little bun. Normally you'd toast it and just whack a way too much butter on it. Like enough butter that you give yourself instant cholesterol issues. But that's how you know you're doing it right. If you can feel the fat going straight to your heart, that's how you know you've done it right. <laughs> enough butter to slip on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> All right, you know what? That got instantly very soggy. You know what? These might actually not soak up grains like I thought they would. Mm. Very hard to say what's gonna happen to this. Maybe it's just gonna disintegrate. You know what? It's gonna disintegrate into a sludge. That's exactly what's gonna happen. <laughs> it's gonna be fun to clean. Yeah. Yay. Oh, jeez Louise, almost dropped all the grains. <laughs> no problems so far. None so far. <laughs> all near misses. We are just about done mashing now. So I'm going to put that top filter on and uh, get this thing going. Let's just get you in there. Nice, wee bit hot. Okay, one hour and counting. So we're gonna recirculate ours because we have the means to do so. If you don't, literally just put your grains in there, maybe at the half an hour mark, come and give it a big mix again, and then let it sit for another half an hour, making sure it's kind of holding at that 69 degrees Celsius. We'll be back to start our sparging. We forgot to mention that we are doing a mash out, especially with such a heavy, sticky mash that I'm predicting this to be with all the stuff that's in there. Uh, it basically means raising your mash temperature up to 77 degrees Celsius for 10 minutes and allowing all the enzymes to denature and stop doing their thing. So we're doing that now, you do the same, and then we'll be back for sparging. I just wanted to take a little gravity reading here because we smelt this from across the room. It really smells quite good. It smells really, really good. Like it just smells like, it smells like Easter morning when you go downstairs and there's hot cross buns and chocolate everywhere. It's amazing. So I was curious what this gravity looks like. 1.065, interesting. So after the sparge, ooh, I reckon there's been a pretty efficient mash. I wonder how much sugar might've come from the hot cross buns themselves. Now it's, ooh, that color. Well. It's blonde, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's only gonna get a little bit more pale after sparging. It's actually probably a bit darker now than what it's gonna end up being. So, as far as we know right now, our color is right for this white stout. It's, I don't know, should've waited a few minutes. This is gonna be so hot. Mm, that's yummy. <laughs> I don't taste hot cross bun, to be honest. It just tastes like sugar. <laughs> it just tastes like wort, like any other wort. Slightly bready but that could be from like the oats and the wheat and stuff. I don't think it's... I think I get a little bit of raisin. Yeah? Yeah. I think you are wanting to taste raisin. I want raisin. I want liquid hot cross bun in my mouth. Is there raisin? You want what in your mouth? <laughs> <laughs> and as we were doing that tasting, uh, you might've heard that beeping. That's, that's, you know what, let me just stop that. That's this thing saying that the uh, mash out is complete. So let's, Move this out of the way. Lift up this grain bed. Now that's actually quite nice and clear. Yeah, very, very clear. All things considered. And a pretty efficient mash, as far as I can tell. A lot more efficient than the chat GPT brew day. We're winning. <laughs> When you can hear it draining. So my greatest fear of this thing just being a full stuck sparge 
has not happened, which is awesome. Oh, check that color there. I'm gonna take a photo for Insta. Nice. All right, let's start sparging. So we've already got our salts in here. We've already got our acid in here. All that is left to do is to, as gently as possible, which is difficult when you're doing it in a bucket this way, start sparging by running this hot water over top of those grains and extracting whatever sugars that we can. Basically like wringing out the sponge, like I like to say, because uh, if you're new to this, you've got a bunch of sugars that are trapped in those grains still, you may as well try and salvage them because it's just gonna give you a bit more beer for what you spent basically. Just keep it on. that just caught that so uh, we we haven't done the transition yet but who cares that was so nearly a boil over Woo! Oh, odin was quick mvp quick on the trigger <laughs> Woo! The <laughs> that was close that was close oh, wowza so looking at this we've got about 30 liters by the looks of things now here's the challenge that is the fermenter it's going in the apollo snub nose that thing there has a maximum volume of 30 liters, but I'd never want to fill it up to that because then it's just going to foam straight out the top. I wouldn't really want to put more than 26 at most. Which leaves me with an issue here. I've got too much liquid for what I want to put into that fermenter. So I'm trying to decide if I do an extra half an hour boil before we actually add the hops. So let me just take a quick gravity reading, see where we're at, and maybe that can kind of help us decide what we do from here because I don't think I'm gonna get five liters of boil off in one hour. That seems like, seems like a lot. Uh, 1.043. Hmm. All right, let's do the extra half an hour boil. We're gonna boil for half an hour, then we're gonna come back, then we're gonna start our one hour of boil and add our bittering hops. Now we can do a proper jump transition. Uh, we made another mistake. <laughs> Lactose. I mean, I could add this kind of any time, to be honest. It doesn't really matter. I could add it towards the end of boil or whatever, but I've got it here. We're waiting to do something. So I'm kind of vibing. Just, just, whoops, sprinkle this in. And what I'm curious about is how many gravity points the lactose on its own adds. Because if I wait till later in the boil, then, you know, the gravity is already going to be higher than my original readings. So I kind of want to pop this in now and just see what happens. Obviously lactose, if you've never used it before, probably a good time to talk about it. Lactose is not fermentable. It's a, it's a milk-based sugar, like cow milk-based sugar. So what it does do though, is add a silky quality to a beer, as well as a regi residual sweetness. And seeing as we're going for a sweet kind of white stout and we're going for that hot cross bun vibe, that icing flavor, that milky icing flavor is kind of work on what I'm aiming for with this lactose. So I'm hoping that it adds that velvety mouthfeel and that little bit of residual sweetness to taste like hot cross bun icing. Now our real hour has, well, is starting and we're adding 20 grams of Northern Brewer. 20 grams of Northern Brewer into the start of the boil. Alrighty. Now in 45 minutes, we're gonna add our whirl flock, but there's no point filming that because it's boring. In five minutes left on the boil, we are gonna add our spalt spatula. So 35 grams of this and, oh geez, I misread that for a second. I thought I was like, oh my God, was that meant to be at the start of the boil? No, no, I added the right hops, it's fine. <laughs> five minutes before the end, we're adding spalt spatula and then we're gonna go flame out, cool this thing down and uh, get to fermenting, I guess. Hops are going in. So this is the 35 grams of Spalt Sputler, which is a noble hop variety from Germany. Why did I choose this hop? I mean, it's delicate, it's floral, it's got a subtle fruitiness, and just generally it tastes like hops should taste. You know what I mean? Like, you know how hops taste like hops, beer tastes like beer? That's kind of what like Spalt Sputler is like being a noble hop variety. And considering that the hops are just not the star of this show, it's all about all the other adjuncts we're throwing in, like all the coffee, the cacao, the vanilla, all that jazz, the hops just need to be hops. So they're just there to keep everything in balance and we'll let all the other stuff provide the kicking flavors. That is boil finished. So let's go power off. 
and start recirculating this thing to cool it down. It's too hot for the pump, it doesn't want to work. Sick, that's what you want. Come on, pump, let's go. Yeah, stuff happens on brew days. It's like, <laughs> yeah, not come a perfect day. <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, had a bit of a spill trying to get the pump working again and whatever, it's pumping now, it's pumping now. Uh, so we've ended up with, what is that? One, two, three, four, about 25 liters, I'm gonna say of wort. So we have boiled down successfully to a more appropriate volume. Okay, it is now coming out of the other end at 26 degrees, which is close enough for me to call yeast pitching temperature. We've got the Apollo set up right here. So this thing's already been cleaned and sort of get a CO2 to keep it, you know, pretty sterile in there. Let's open this up and start transferring over. Pop it in and away we go. Done. I will also start aerating this thing just a little bit once the liquid level is a bit higher. We'll uh, get a little bit of oxygen into this thing. There we have it, we are all fermented up. That is 23 liters sitting in the fermenter. Is that right? Probably. 23 liters in the end, and we are pitching with 16 grams of Oz 05, which is, as I mentioned, basically US 05. So use a clean fermenting yeast for this one. I would have preferred to have used like a Kolsch yeast. I just didn't have any on hand, and this is pretty clean, so it's gonna do a fairly good job. Let's pop those bad boys in. I will also say I am aiming to ferment this as cool as possible, but it's a little bit hot here at the moment. So what I'm probably gonna do is whack on a, um, a, an airlock regulator so that I'll keep this around, let's say 12 PSI, depending on how hot it gets, to just try and keep this yeast as clean as possible. That's it, you will see me in a moment as I put in our dry hops with all of our uh, adjuncts. Welcome to the Wombat Kitchen. I think I need to speak like Jaime Oliver while I do this bit here. So we're gonna be making something quite spicy and fruity for this, <laughs> for this bit. <laughs> I can't keep that up. Uh, so we are not cooking, but what we are doing is preparing a little tincture that's gonna go into our Easter stout because we're trying to make this taste kind of like a hot cross bun. We're gonna be using one stick of cinnamon, eight allspice berries, also called Ooh, what are they called, like pimento berries or something like that, and two B-grade Madagascar vanilla beans, and sultanas, aka raisins, which we will throw into the fermenter for a dry hop. Lastly, we have our cacao nib vodka. So if you haven't seen the videos where we've done this stuff, thumbnail, card, tag, things up there, but when we made the, the Christmas stout, we used this, when we made the uh, cacao, the chocolate stout with real cacao nibs, we made this. It's basically cacao nibs that have been roasted in the oven for seven minutes, and then they've been soaked in vodka for a week. That extracts all the flavor out of them and makes that thing kind of like a dark chocolate bomb. So I'm gonna use that with this stuff. I've just realized I don't have coffee here, but I will buy coffee beans, and those coffee beans will also go into the fermenter with the sultanas. Now I'm gonna slice and dice this stuff. The idea with the vanilla beans is you do wanna slice them down the middle, so that you can actually scrape out all the seeds on the insides. If I just open this up, you'll be able to see all that, all that shiny black stuff. We want all that. And we're gonna put the actual bean as well inside the, uh, the jar. We're just doing this to really try and help extract all that flavor out of it. So try and scrape that out. See what I mean? All that stuff. That right there is flavor. There's that. I'm just gonna chop that in half to make it smaller. There's that. Let's do this one as well that there and scrape all that in. Nice. Oh man, got some there. Well actually, I'm throwing that cinnamon stick in, so I guess that's done. Go to the bottom. Uh, and the allspice berries, not doing anything with these, literally just throwing them in as is. I'm just using eight of these because they are quite a strong flavor. So you're always better off with these tinctures going a little bit too little, then a little bit too much, and then just making something that blows the socks off the flavor palette and destabilizes and unbalances the beer. So I'm gonna start with, let's say 200 mils. I don't think 200 mils should darken a whole keg all that much. And this stuff like really, Tastes like dark chocolate. It's, oh, it's so, so good. In you go. 
Yeah, I think that looks good. What do you reckon, Odin? He's too distracted taking B-roll. He's lost the ability of speed. So gotta change the color, that's the question. That is the question. It's a question I don't have an answer to yet. This is a part of experimentation. I think it will darken it slightly. Slightly, potentially, yeah. yeah. But in a whole keg's worth? I mean, only one way to find out. I might have made a tragic mistake by doing this with the cacao nibs, but I also want to boost that, you know, that chocolate flavor that you need in a, in a stout. So, I don't know. We'll find out if this was a terrible mistake. <laughs> might be a brown stout. <laughs> we'll find out. I think I've got hope. I've got hope that that's not going to damage the, the color too much. What are we adding this? This, we're gonna dry hop. So we're gonna add this probably a week into fermentation when primary fermentation is finished, basically. We're gonna throw this in. We are gonna strain this out, by the way. Don't throw all that in because it just might make it a bit difficult trying to keg your beer. But I'm gonna strain this out. I'm gonna throw the extract flavor into the fermenter at the same time as throwing in the sultanas and the, uh, and the coffee beans. It is now just day two of fermentation and this thing has finished actually kind of ridiculously fast. I don't think it's at final gravity yet. I took a reading at uh, this temperature, which is quite warm. It's currently sitting around, you know, 26 degrees. Temperature reading was around 1.014. So with a bit of bias, let's call that 1.016. I know it's gonna have a higher final gravity because of that bit of lactose in there, but fermentation is not fully finished, but it's very, very close to final gravity. So time to add our sultanas or raisins to the Americans in our audience. I don't know how strong a flavor these are gonna actually carry through because I've never used them before. So what I'm figuring is I'm gonna start with um, half a kilo or one pound and leave them in for a few days as we're at the tail end of fermentation, kind of taste a few samples, see how it's pulling up because I do have that one more addition with that tincture, that spice tincture we made, as well as the coffee beans. So I'm gonna let these sit in for a few days and just kind of see how the flavor progresses. Is it gonna be way overpowering or are we gonna need more? So let's get this thing opened up, depressurize it first, dump all these in. All right, easy done. And close her up again. That is it. Next up, I will probably be back, I assume, like say, maybe three days, four days from now. I do want this, I mean, as much as you might hit final gravity, you do kind of want to let your yeast clean things up a little bit before you move on to basically getting ready to finish your beer. So yeah, maybe like four days or something. I'll reassess this between now and then off camera. And then I'll be back to dump in our spice tincture as well as our coffee. It is now day six of fermentation and we are, well, we're well and truly finished fermentation. So this is sitting at about 1.013 and we are now ready to add our spice tincture as well as our coffee beans, which are sitting just down here. Now, the actual, I'm gonna break something. The actual sultanas or raisins, if you will, have, I don't know, it looks like, what do they look like? They look like roasted chickpeas or something. They've swollen up and they look quite odd. Nevertheless, they've added a punch of flavor. So I've never worked with them before, as I just mentioned, but the flavor has well and truly come through. And I think this is about day three of them sitting in here. So what I would recommend is doing the same thing that I did if you're gonna do this. Less is more, start with a little bit, let it sit for a few days. If there's just not enough flavor punch, add more after the fact, but yeah, you're not gonna be able to take the flavor away once it's already in there. And I think it's already a pretty substantial amount. So do that. Speaking of which, actually, I will be adding 250 grams of uh, coffee beans. These are Araba Arabakia, Arabakia, Arab Arabakia coffee beans. I can't remember how to say that, but it's a larger coffee bean. Anyway, these ones are a medium to heavy roast. They should be imparting flavors of espresso, dark chocolate, and almonds, like roasted almonds, which I think will complement quite nicely in a white stout. Um, choose whatever coffee bean you like, I guess. Yeah, there's not a huge amount of information that I could find, at least that I could find. If you guys have more information, please let me know on like how to do white stouts and how much coffee beans over how long and all that kind of jazz. There seems to be a lot of mixed opinions. So I'm just going with my best guesstimate for this one. 
Maybe 250 grams is too much, but you know what? There's one thing I love about science and that's experimentation. So we will find out if I've done anything wrong. And this infusion, by the way, was a combination of two Madagascar B-grade vanilla beans, um, our cacao nib tincture that we made many months ago now, like basically cacao nib vodka. Um, what else? One stick of cinnamon, eight uh, allspice berries, and as well as the, you know, lactose, the 220 grams, I think, of lactose that went into this thing earlier. As far as I can tell so far, the only thing that I would actually change to this recipe is potentially adding more lactose, because I have tasted a sample, and I think maybe it won't quite be milky sweet enough, but only one way to find out. So anyway, all this stuff is now in there. We're gonna let that rest for a couple of days, and I will taste this every day. Once I'm happy with what the flavor is, we're gonna pull this thing out. As I said, the, you know, the number of days I did this is gonna be up there and I'll discuss it in the brew talk or the tasting. So, that is it. Our white Easter chocolate stout is now finished. Sorry, white Easter hot cross bun chocolate stout is now finished. Next time you guys see me, I'm gonna be tasting this thing once it's cold crash carbonated and ready in a glass. So, thanks for sticking around. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you then. Cheers, guys.